So in our previous video, we discussed the beneficial effects of microorganisms. So today we'll be talking about the harmful effects of microorganisms. So microorganisms can cause harm, number one, by causing food spoilage. So let's start with that. Let's talk about food spoilage. So how can microorganisms cause food spoilage? One thing we should know is food spoilage, we can define food spoilage as the process or change which renders a product or food unusable or unacceptable for consumption. Or we could say food spoilage is the process is a process or a change which renders food undesirable or unacceptable for consumption. So this food spoilage can be caused by different things, but we're talking about food spoilage caused by microorganisms. So that's, we could say microbiological food spoilage. Now that's caused by the growth of microorganisms. So like we've mentioned before, microorganisms are found everywhere. So uh, when microorganisms cause food spoilage, it is because of their growth in a particular place or area. So, microbiological food spoilage is caused when microorganisms grow in a place and they, then, then it produces enzymes that makes the food to spoil. Now, we have huge amounts of food that is spoiled every year um, by different microorganisms. Most, we have fungi, bacteria, protozoa, even algae, they, they, they spoil food. So, when they grow, in our food, they spoil those food and make them unfit for consumption. So that is an harmful effect of microorganisms. Another harmful effect of microorganisms is that they cause deterioration or damage to materials such as paper, wood, leather, and so on and so forth. So microorganisms can also cause damage to um, other materials apart from food and organic mat uh, matter. They can cause damage to um, non-living things or materials that are useful like paper wood and so on and so forth so they can cause damage to those things so that is another harmful effect of microorganisms so um, another harmful effect of microorganisms is that they cause diseases they cause diseases to living organisms which could also lead to death so microorganisms cause diseases to both plants and animals and these diseases can eventually lead to the death of these organisms, which is this the mo perhaps the most dangerous um, harmful effect of microorganisms, causing of diseases. So let's talk a little about the disease-causing microorganisms, the microorganisms that cause diseases. Now, as we mentioned in one of our previous videos, pathogens are um, disease-causing organisms. So we're talking about in, in sense, in another sense, we're talking about the pathogenic microorganisms that cause diseases. Now, the uh, microorganisms that cause diseases in humans, we want to use, talk about uh, pathogens in humans now. They are mostly viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and fungi. So those are the major um, microorganisms that cause diseases in humans. Viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and fungi. Now, pathogenic microorganisms cause infectious or communicable diseases. What do we mean by this? We mean diseases that can be spread from one person or one um, organism to another. So, the diseases that are caused by my, um, pathogenic microorganisms are caused are called communicable or infectious disease. So, how do these diseases spread? So these uh, diseases are obviously caused by the pathogens. How do they spread? How do these pathogens that cause these diseases spread into the living organisms? Now, pathogens can be spread through air. So we call these um, pathogens, or we call the disease caused by these pathogens, airborne pathogens or airborne diseases. So pathogens can be spread by air. Airborne, that means carried by air. And pathogens can be spread through water. We call this one the water-borne pathogens. That's the pathogens that are carried by water. Then we also have food. We have the food-borne pathogens. These are pathogens carried by food. 
so the food we eat pathogens that are found in those in the food we have direct skin contact so that's another way um, diseases and pathogens spread through direct skin contact and we um, also have through animal vectors we've mentioned this when we're talking about carriers of microorganisms so these are the ways pathogens can spread so let's take these five um, methods or five ways these five mediums or means through which microorganisms can spread and talk about each of them one after the other so many disease causing organisms are light organisms they, they do not have weights so or they, they have light some of them have spores that can easily float in the air so this airborne pathogens these pathogens that are carried by air enter into the body of a person through the air the person breathes so these pathogens are floating in the air and an innocent person just breathes breathes in this pathogen and these pathogens that are in the air enter into the body of that person so these pathogens affect majorly the nose the throat the trachea the bronchi and the lungs specifically the respiratory tract, the respiratory system. So they affect the nose, the throat, the trachea, the bronchi, and the lungs. Now, these pathogens can cause diseases like um, pneumonia, tuberculosis, influenza, mumps, and um, so on and so forth. So these are airborne, we we'll call these diseases airborne diseases caused by airborne pathogens. So. We also have diseases or pathogens that are spread through water or waterborne pathogens. Now, we have some pathogens that are spread by just drinking water. Now, we are, if, if, um, if someone drinks water that has been contaminated by pathogens, the person can be infected by these pathogens. Now, these pathogens specifically affect the intestines of their hosts and cause diarrhea. The, the, the major part of the body they affect is the intestines and they cause diarrhea. So, um, since we are talking about waterborne pathogens, the only way we take in water is by drinking, obviously. So, when we drink um, contaminated water, the, these pathogens enter into the body and affect the intestines and cause diarrhea by that um, affecting those intestines. So, um, this, this, um, examples of diseases that are caused by um, water, waterborne pathogens in, um, majorly include typhoid and cholera. So these are the major um, diseases caused by waterborne pathogens, pathogens that are found in water. So when a person takes contaminated water, the person can be infected by waterborne diseases like cholera and typhoid. Now, one thing we need to note is that some people can harbor or have um, pathogenic organisms in their bodies without showing signs of diseases. So this, we have some people that have these pathogens in them, or could have even some animals that have these pathogens in them without showing signs of diseases. These people are called carriers. So we could have person A and person B. So person A can be a carrier. So what this means is that Person A might be healthy. He can be healthy looking. He can not even have, he may not even have any disease, but he has the pathogen that causes some particular diseases. So if person A, or sorry, rather, if person B comes in contact with person A, or comes in contact with maybe the feces, uh, maybe the sweat of, of person A, the person can contract the disease through the pathogens that cause that disease. The person can come in contact with those pathogens. So a carrier is a source of disease. A carrier is a person that has or harbors pathogens without showing signs of disease. So we could also have microorganisms that spread through food. Now, um, pathogenic microorganisms or organisms or pathogens can be spread by eating contaminated food. If we eat food that has been contaminated by pathogens, they can spread into the bodies of healthy people. Now, foodborne pathogens tend to affect the intestines. So also pathogens or pathogenic organisms 
can be spread by eating contaminated food. Now, um, we have some food-borne pathogens that uh, they are found in food. They, 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 they tend to affect the intestines majorly. So foods like um, milk and ice cream are foods that can um, be easily, there can be sources of infections. Patho because pathogens easily multiply rapidly in um, foods like this. Foods that are easily exposed, like milk, like ice cream. So uh, these uh, foods, if they are consumed, they can cause diseases. Now, examples of diseases caused by um, foodborne pathogens include bacillary dysentery, amoebic dysentery, then salmonella, and uh, cholera. So those are um, diseases that can be caused by foodborne pathogens. So we could also have pathogens or some pathogenic organisms that are spread through direct contact or direct physical um, touch. So these diseases, they have a name, they are called contagious diseases. Diseases spread through direct contact or direct physical contact. Now, physical contact, we could be talking about um, contact in um, crowded places, contact when playing games, or contact during activities like um, um, kissing and sexual intercourse. So diseases can spread through these activities or through this physical contact. And um, these diseases are called contagious diseases. So we also have some pathogens that can be spread through direct contact or physical contact. Now these diseases are known as contagious diseases. Diseases that are spread through physical contact or direct contact. So this physical contact that we're talking about could be could include um, contact in um, crowded places. If you're in a place that is crowded, you could have contact with someone that has some pathogens or some diseases. Um, then um, when playing games, when with people having fun, that's, um, there's also where there's physical contact. Then during activities like kissing and um, sexual intercourse, that's also physical contact that would cause spread of pathogens that could cause diseases. Also, using the things of an infected person could also cause, um, um, I mean, when we say infected person that's been infected with a contagious disease could also cause infection to an healthy person. So if an healthy person is making use of the um, effects or personal belongings of a person that has been infected with a disease, the person can also catch that disease. Now, contagious diseases specifically usually affect the skin and the mucous membrane of, um, of a person. And uh, the diseases that are uh, commonly spread by skin contact or direct um, touch include uh, leprosy, um, ringworm, yaws, syphilis, gonorrhea, and so on and so forth. So that disease is spread by skin contact. Or could say these are contagious diseases. So we also have diseases that are spread through animal vectors. So um, we've mentioned this one, we're talking about um, animal vectors. So the, um, diseases that are carried from person to person by animal vectors. For example, we have um, mosquitoes that carry fever, that carry malaria from person to person. For example, the Aedes mosquito that carries malaria, um, the Aedes mosquito rather carries virus, the um, female Anopheles mosquito carries um, malaria. So that's um, spread through animal vectors. Animal vectors also carry pathogens that cause diseases. So those, they, they, um, actually the vectors don't carry the diseases, they carry pathogens. Uh, the, um, the Aedes mosquito doesn't carry um, the fever, it carries the virus that causes fever. The female Anopheles mosquito doesn't carry malaria, it carries um, the plasmodium, that's the um, pathogen that causes malaria. So with that, we've come to the end of today's video on um, microorganisms. See you next video where we'll be talking about different diseases and um, their causative agents and so on and so forth. See you next class.